The cyanic class has been thrown around a lot by a lot of different people, but don't worry, this one is gonna blow your mind. Eh? Get it? Like mind? Like mind? I'm going over all the basics of how this new cyanic class works, plus I have a 30 plus page PDF with an entire cyanic class, seven different subclasses, magic items, and six different cyanic races too. I'm also gonna highlight a lot of the different homebrew decisions that were made in the making of this class and truly making it unique. Like the first thing here, that this cyanic casting class is not a spellcaster. What? I'll explain why they're not a full caster, but scions use the power of their minds to affect the world around them and the minds of others. They get plenty of telekinesis and telepathic powers that those seven different subclasses take and run with. But this is very different from a lot of different iterations of this class that feel more like a sorcerer or a wizard. But unlike other spellcasters, the scion's mind is an extension of their body, which leads to the telekinesis aspect of it. They think of moving something and they actually act on it. And their minds can overpower other people's minds, which is the telepathy part. So what does this class look like? Let's dive into the PDF, and then in a little bit, I'll tell you how you can get your hands on this PDF later in the video. First level is psionic power, their class defining feature. You get psionic energy die, and you get twice as many as your proficiency bonus. These kind of work like martial die to give a comparison, but these fuel your psionic abilities and let you be able to also do lots of other things or boost up your psionic abilities. These also increase in size, similar to bardic inspiration and lots of other things from a D6 all the way up to D12. Also for telekinesis at this base level, you basically have a mage hand that's not an actual mage hand. It's actually your mind, so it's not a mage hand floating around. It's literally your mind moving stuff, and you have a five foot shove in any creature within 30 feet of you, and you can deal an extra 1d6 force damage. I think this is really cool for that use the force type of thing, because martial classes as an action can shove, but this lets you have a ranged shove, and you can do a whole lot of tactical stuff there with that. And it deals force damage, <laughs> get it? Like force. And for the telepathic part of this class, they can speak telepathically with any creature within 30 feet, and they have a psychic attack to deal 1d6 damage and take away the target's reaction. So hopefully you can see some of the utility here, and the base class of a scion is not going to be some crazy damage nuker. This is a lot of utility stuff, but don't worry, the subclasses, <laughs> some of them can really go for the damage. The last flavor feature here at level 1 is Mind Sense, and think of this like Divine Sense. It's purposely phrased in that way. For paladins, they can sense evil creatures around them, but for the scion, they can actually sense the emotional state of other intelligent creatures around them and they can reach out with their minds to other people's minds. So that's a level one psionic and I want to stop there and think about what can they actually do? What, what, how would you play a level one psionic? They have a range shove utility attack that they can move people out of the way to help for opportunity attacks possibly. They also have a psychic intelligence type attack that they can stop someone's reaction. So they have a lot of utility going on, but they also are proficient in simple weapons. And you can play them like a rogue or ranger too, with some up close weapons or far away. And you can really multi-class a lot because this is not a full caster. If you like certain aspects of the psionic, but you want to combine them with other classes, oh, that'd be... <laughs> I'm thinking about all that stuff. It'd be really cool. There's a lot of other things you get in this class to help certain different play styles that you want to do with this thing. Whichever one of those seem the best for you. Which brings us to level two, psionic talents. In this PDF, there are 61 different psionic talents. I'm not messing around with this thing. Me and my team that we put together this thing is a super customizable thing. I really love giving a lot of customizable options at level two for other classes. And comment down below what class you'd want to see maybe a rework on because I really do like the warlock type invocation thing on classes of really letting them be able to customize the type of class that they want to be besides just picking a subclass. So you get to pick some psionic talents here, and here's just a couple of my favorites. Cerebral weapons lets you create psychic energy weapons with your mind. A lot of these weapons have different and unique properties, and after you make the attack, it vanishes. There's also a bunch of different feats that let you do psychic lightning in a lot of different ways, which is kind of like casting spells, but you're going to be using your psionic dice to cast them. And then there's other psionic talents that connect to the psionic talents, almost like a talent tree of sorts. There's something called Lightning Vault that I absolutely love. If, if you've selected this psionic talent, any time that you've dealt lightning damage to a target it, during your turn, you can teleport to that target. There's so many different cool combos I can think of pulling off here, but this also works really well with the Voidwalker subclass, which is all about teleporting and mobility. And also when you choose Psionic Talents, there's a full section for different spell casting options. If you do have some certain spells that you really like that's in the game that you want to be able to use and you think it would really be the type of vision you have for your Scion, you can pick these things and you can choose from the spell list and there's certain level requirements that you have for each of them. But you can pick cantrips that you have that you can use, different spells and all 
all that kind of stuff. You use your psionic energy dice to cast the spells, but they are actually spells. Third level now, you guessed it, this is where you get to pick your subclass called the psionic order. Time out. I would not be able to create resources like this month after month if it was not for my patrons. A lot goes in these PDFs, especially when I'm bringing in other people that I want to help support them as well. So the support goes right back into creating new aspects every single month to be able to spark some ideas and creativity in everyone's games. So support at the $5 level gets you access to the DC playbook each and every month. This month is a psionic class and two subclasses, one for telepathy and one for telekinesis. And trust me, it's a lot of content that a lot of work has gone into for only five bucks. And then there's higher reward tiers to unlock even more parts of this psionic themed PDF. And every single month, there's a different theme, but you get five more subclasses, a bunch of psionic themed magic items, six different psionic races, including brand new homebrew races from my childhood favorites of Majora's Mask, the, the big head creatures from Marvel, Protoss from Starcraft, which is so awesome to see in this PDF, and even playable race of a floomph. So become a patron right now and click the links down below. And you can pick it up for yourself. But these DC playbooks are only available on my Patreon for two months at a time. Then if it's past that, so if you're watching this in the future, you can check it out on my website and the link for that will be down in the description too. Back to the Scion. We got seven different subclasses here that I want to give you a taste of. The Hidden Hand takes telekinesis to the next level and allows you to have floating weapons all around you and be able to really dial up the telekinesis aspect of this class. Kind of like the Moon Druid subclass amps up the shape-shifting form of the Druid class. And then there's the Mercurial Mind, which actually might be my favorite out of all of them. This one takes telepathy to the next level and you can actually bridge the gap between your mind and other party members. Or I guess I should say characters, not, not you don't actually get telepathic powers, but this grants your character access to each other's abilities. Early on at lower levels, this looks like a proficiency bonus and you can mentally grant a proficiency bonus that you're proficient in to someone else. You're proficient with some sort of ranged weapon, you can pass that on to others. Proficient with acrobatics, now that character knows how to be acrobatic. You're truly synced up. And the 14th level ability for this subclass, you can literally tap into the character's actual class features. You can mentally link with the druid of the party and use their wild shape feature on yourself. Don't worry, we did balance this. It does use one of the charges of their wild shape form and you get to use it on yourself and <laughs> all the same things apply. And there are so many other crazy combo shenanigans that you'd be able to do here. But don't get too crazy because there's some exhaustion stacks that you'll get after this effect ends, but you could really go crazy with it. But man, does that sound fun. Those are the first two subclasses. I'm gonna go through the rest of these a little quicker, but I hope this is some inspiration of sort of ideas. Maybe you can make a subclass of some other class that has these types of weird, crazy things with it. Maybe a psychic sorcerer or whatever other things that you want to take and run with for yourself. The burning terror subclass hits on the pyromancer and fear effects of what you can do mentally. And then the medium subclass speaks to the spirits and makes people see dead people and you can even summon a spirit and control it yourself. The oracle gets psychic foresight, which is inspired from a divination wizard, but this psychic version just feels a lot more like an oracle. And and doesn't have port and die, but has a better version. But anyway, there's a psychic knight, which is basically a super tank with psychic shields. And this is the type of stuff that I like to push the limits of this class is I don't want you to think inside the box of a psychic, psychic using ability person. This person is actually using the, however strong you could be a dexterity or a strength version of this thing, but they're in the combat, mid the middle of everything, being able to psychically put up shields to protect themselves. I absolutely love tanks in Dungeons and Dragons, and I could do a whole rant video about that. But another subclass is the Void Walker, which is a high mobility, being able to teleport around the battlefield. The most similar thing I can think of is a Horizon Walker, which took some inspiration from that and being able to blip around the battlefield. But this is the psychic version where you spin your psionic energy die and basically miss to step all over the battlefield. Hopefully you can see this thing is fully flushed out. Just like everything I try and give you guys, I wanna give you guys the highest quality, professional grade stuff every single month. These resources are for all players and dungeon masters who wanna truly customize their game and inspire and spark some different types of creativity for you to pick and choose from. All of this customization is leading towards one huge Kickstarter that I'm starting that's customizing not just the class, but the entire game of Dungeons and Dragons. And as a celebration, I'm doing 15% off anyone who joins Patreon at the annual level. First of all, they continue support and it makes things a little bit more consistent and helps out and all of that's going right back into the Kickstarter because man this Kickstarter thing is expensive especially for just little old me I can only have so many capabilities to do and I really want to make this thing as big as possible so check all of that out down in the description Time out. I wanted to stop and thank two members of my homebrew council that really brought this psionic class to life Purius has been a huge homebrewer on my team and this class was his brainchild 
brainchild. We are so synced up when it comes to the philosophy of the game, but he spearheaded this pitch idea to me of this class. And the second person I want to talk about is Pagnabros. He's came in over a year ago and we did the Ranger class revision together and he is also a next level home brewer. So he came in with his own version of the class as well and together they blended this thing into something that was truly amazing. It is so fun to be in those collaboration homebrew meetings that we have and how to figure out how the best way to do this thing. I have a certain method that I have for classes. They blend it into that. It's a very beautiful collaboration process that anytime you want to homebrew, I inspire you to get some people together, share ideas. I have a Discord that you can come join and share ideas with that community. Anytime you're sharing ideas, they're going to be better. I am so proud of how this thing turned out. I'm so excited to share it with all of you. The team I have developed is extremely talented and I can't wait to see what huge things we can do in the future kind of like that kickstarter i'm talking about so i'm going to send it off like this now stay creative and think outside the box